Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Final Circle, a show where we go through everything that's gone on in the last week on Series E, as well as the Apex Legends community as a whole. I am your host, as always. My name is Yeso. Excited to be here once again. Love getting to break this down with all of you at home. We've got a great show for you today. It was an exciting week in Series E. We'll be also talking about the latest with the hashtag a day off Twitch movement, as well as possibly the death of tap strafing in Apex Legends. Tons to cover here today. But for those of you that are new and don't know just how Series E works, I can break it down for you, okay? Series E is a professional Apex Legends open circuit that absolutely anyone can join. We have nine squads that qualified either through our open qualifiers prior to the season or based on their placement in season two of Series E. Now, all nine of those squads have now been drafted and signed by our nine partner brands, and each player now makes $750 a month salary, as well as competes weekly for points and prize money every Tuesday night against other open squads, just like they used to be themselves, and then every single Wednesday against some of the best pros from all across North America. If you and your squad want to get in on the action yourselves, head over to matcharino.com slash ESA, or you can even use the exclamation point signup command in Twitch chat for your shot at being a future Series E pro. Now, just so you know how the schedule breaks down every week, we have competition every Tuesday and Wednesday night. Again, open teams on Tuesday, pros on Wednesday, and both of those days kick off at 4 p.m. Pacific time right here at twitch.tv slash esports arena. And then, of course, we're here every Friday for Final Circle to break down everything that happened, and that is live at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure to clear your schedules. All right, now it's time to talk, of course, about Series E. It was week eight this week in the league, and it was Intel week as well. Our first place squad continuing to show their dominance on a week-to-week -week basis. While they haven't necessarily been coming in first place overall on a nightly basis, as we saw them doing early on in the season, they continue to put up very consistent point totals and compete every single day. Night. They were coming into their sponsored week trying to capture their third open night title. Let's see how the action broke down. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. It's time to kick off my favorite week of the season because I picked them to win Series E. It's Intel week. It's week number eight here of Series E. Just outside of Fragment, getting involved in a fight. There's a Caustic on the other side as well, and they're taking the ring damage, so they've got to be careful now as they move forward. The EVA eight shots do connect. B Mills is the first one to fall. Cold, but Emusona's up there, but Gan by himself. Sometimes how he plays disconnected is so scary. Bubble for bubble. Remember, he's just sitting on the white. He's already been cracked. Now here comes the rest of the team, though. He's the first one to fall. Obsessed picking that one up. Apple been phenomenal throughout the season. Apple Jacks are stuck in such a difficult spot. We've seen even TSM rotate and hold down here a handful of times, but it's just so difficult with only two players. Razor with the numbers advantage up against the rest of the lobby here, looking to finish things off to 3v2v2. Because of all the fights taking place right here. Now they'll be able to finish them off and that's gonna be Team Razor taking there's a nice finish coming through and a quick armor spot for gibby and turns flies in with the l star doing insane amount of damage is that the spitfire no it blows things out advancing onto their position rambo leading the charge madness has been cracked in the back but rambo should be able to do enough damage finish them they're so weak but they're both in the bubble and they're hitting heals that's enough pressure to allow Malice to get back into this game, but all of a sudden, Hello Bursty coming through it was so sneaky in the back the entire time. Things are just going so well for Benchformers right now to come in with these third parties, and that's exactly what happens with just a to be rewarded with a handful of loot, a handful of kills, and they're looking good to start this one off. Scissors starts off with a knock. It's a frag grenade onto official B Mills. Presley is so weak goes down phony's flanking around the corner i like this play going and flanking coming through with the bubble to cover the backside as well basically playing ring around rosie with these players here amazing job by phony trying to buy some here's absolute monarchy getting gate kept currently defensive bombardment down shroom picks that one up this squad the blockbusters where are they coming from sleepy panda 
minutes left to try and fight this one out, but he's gonna get finished, duping another bat for himself. Pringles getting finished off very shortly here. Now Madness gets spotted out, but they have to be careful with their trigger discipline. Make sure they're targeting the right members, but Scissors comes in from above. He gets finished off at the final team members remaining. Wow. Blockbusters coming in with a onto Daddy as they'll be able to finish him off. Bubble's been used as well. Team Intel, no strangers whatsoever to getting 50 50 here, but that he can go and actually strafe back and forth and they're going to be okay. But there was a Caustic on the other end. It does get knocked. That's going to be obsessed. They weren't expecting that. There's the bubble as well. And it's just, uh, again, a little bit of the staggering of the timing, Jamerson. I really feel like if... Okay, but that's going to allow Team Pringles now to push up with that defensive bombardment. Should they manage as well to jump? Pat coming out from the Applejack squad, but they jump right into the waiting crosshairs of Team Pringles. They should be able to take this. There we go. Alternator out, finishing it off. We'll end up taking Epicenter side and just playing the high ground rocks there. But it's Rockstar getting themselves into an early fight and an uncharacteristic, uh, Good name. Um, excuse me, uh, early rotation coming out from Rockstar there, getting the knock onto Daddy there. That's going to be a quick one that brings us down to a 3v2 for them. And jumping into the portal is Charlie Whiskey. Had a few too many shots of for his squad. And Kupski's been in this position before, left to try and rat things out. There you go, Bursi, the only one alive. We're up against the bench warmers who know exactly where they are. Rambo trying to get aggressive, but he gets peaked by two members. Gets cracked, and now he's dropped down to 40 HP, stuck behind the rock, knee goes down. And that's that patent and Rambo aggression you talk about all the time, Tom. Leaving things in a 2v3. Madness versus and Madness and Nox versus the three members of Blockbuster. Can Blockbuster clean things up? Madness now left in the 1v1, but the HP advantage goes over to Shroom. Out for BBJ as they push out lines by himself, but he's got the coverage now. Z Davis starting the corner. Junior Claw falls. Now Pop Tarts finally finding an entry here, forcing out the bubble on the other side as uh, Z Davis just tops off and goes again with a bubble of his own. These caustic barrels really slowing them down, but they've backed him into a corner now. Thermite obscuring a little bit of the vision, but he's got the massive at the very least and did some damage. BVN answers back, but it's still the 2v1. Makes him come through on the cleanup crew. That's exactly what they're looking for. And this is what the composition is really built off to play. When you have all these angles you can cut off. Oh boy, Veral <laughs> tries to go for that nade, but there we go. They're going to be able to finish good base and teams. Meanwhile, Team Cheez-It is pushing over towards the side. This is absolute no. crazy plays coming in from Team Cheez-It. I thought they were about to jump into the lava there, but it was just a bait finicky chases after. Golden does answer back. And now as they try to push in for that final, you got to be careful with this Prowler one to be eliminated. Bubble is still in the hand of Finicky if he wants to go and use it. One bubble's already been used by the enemy team. There's his bubble to counter. And now it is on. Oh, no. They're getting ripped apart by Skittle Cakes, actually. That's going to be a big toxic gas right there. Volhurst is going to heal throughout all of that. Multiple kills going on over and Team Intel takes the final game. Jamerson, let's go ahead and check in with the Mobile One leaderboard to see who stands up top. And oh, oh Team Intel, just four points. Tuesday night was an absolute blast and things definitely came down to the wire. Team Intel did end up winning their first game of the night in the final game of the night as they tried to chase down the bench warmers at the top of the standings. However, as you can see, they fell just short of grabbing first place on open night as bench warmers grab another victory on a Tuesday. But Intel still putting up a solid 75 points, continue to build on their lead over Team Pringles. Now, as we look at the cumulative standings for our open teams, remember that all of these squads are battling for a guaranteed spot in the next season of Series E. Whoever comes out at the top of these standings by the end of the season will grab that spot and currently bench warmers hold the lead. They are up by 28 points over PSS, largely thanks to the 79 point performance that they had this week. Bench warmers continue to look like one of the strongest open night squads and look like heavy favorites to finish the season atop our open squad standings. But we'll have to see as there's still a few more weeks of play between us and the end of the season. Now moving into Wednesday, of course, it was pro night. We had some of the biggest names 
in competitive Apex coming out to compete. TSM were looking to make it back-to-back -back Pro Night victories after another strong showing last week. Meanwhile, without CLG here yet to announce their new roster, we had a special guest squad joining us. Team Sheesh featuring It's Timmy, a prize, and more showed up to try and compete with some of the best of the best in competitive. Let's see how they were able to do on Wednesday night. Happy Wednesday, and it is Intel Week on Series E. There's a team right above him. Here's Pop-Tarts in their fights over at Skyhook right now, losing out on their third. Mooney will be the next one to fall. It was Team Intel that got on top of them. There, look at all really just stooming around, just dodging grenades. Bubbles go down from both teams. Naughty's gonna go and hit a battery. And those three teams, those three players are stuck right there. One grenade would change everything. Up really just goes and sends it like a madman through the defensive bombardment as well. Have to drop down into teams of three. Yeah, both Exit and Pringles just very wary of getting dropped on there. Here comes an EMP out from Kenny and connects. They get the knock on to Clay and that's going to be Exit pushing forward for the win out of Lava City. So who could this be? Is it going to be Timmy Squad on the other side? Find out in just a moment. And it is going to be Team Sheesh. Uh, they're backing up right now. Bubbles have been used from either side. The boat check bow out for Timmy of all things, but they are breathing in the gas. And now they are getting pushed inside their bubble. Timmy almost cracked another barrel out and Timmy's doing a good job clearing them, but he needs to back up his squad. Dupe slides in to get the knock on some more. Apreezy is the next one to fall and Timmy will go down. 19th place team intel that could potentially stop grenades from coming through as tsm now makes the rotation now takes their fight over towards the side it's all out brawl inside this bubble and it looks like it's going to be renegades involved in this one saucer with the original knock snipe down needs to fly in he also has to reload prowler in hand though can he take this down he does third party coming through there that's going to full splash is taking a lot of damage and there's the trade this should be team razor coming in for the third party now as a result it takes out gibby turns all throughout all of this now here's razor looking for the cleanup they're going to secure all the bodies on the ground get all the kills as well what a great game team razor cleaning up for game number two stuck inside of that ring of fire but Dottie's stuck in a tough spot right here. Great spray with the flatline. Gets taken out. This is going to be Team Intel. Skillcakes is in the vicinity, but he gets knocked immediately by Zach Mazer. Dupe's going to answer that one with a flush over towards the side. And now Alberly is forced to go and immediately push outside the huge brawl. And it's about 30 seconds away as this zone is starting to move. Our first fights are taken inside of the building where they're coexisting. It's going to be Knights going against a team of three. It looks like that is the Charlotte Phoenix as well. That's going to be Greek Kodagami going down. Stink it. The design pull as he backs the way though apple jacks come in for the third party of their own they get the knock on to z davis and they're the ones picking up these kills onto them oh so rated r dropped a little bit low but pop team liquid now as they push up forcing out the bubble haculo and baby Tuli just waiting the inevitable pushing out big crack out onto haculo as fun We'll be able to get this last kill in just a moment. Team Liquid at Gibby is the only one left. And here's Cheesa coming in for the third party. Mollus canceling that and we'll go ahead and push up to try and finish off TSM. Now it's just reps left to try and get his teammates back on in, but Golden scans him out. So TSM are gonna be out here in 17th. Well, they throw one their bubble down and they go ahead and force the issue up against the squad and crazy taking a lot of damage they trade up against the apple jacks but they do finish them off they need to get crazy back up and we'll see if g2 show up to try and third party you can see the nades coming in they're not going to be able to get him back up the arc stars are just too strong it's cloud nine as well bowser the first one the fall for team era but it's traded this is cloud nine's opportunity now to start pushing up to pick up these kills and finish them off team incel only left with verholz here and he does that at least secure second place for them this is about to be a cloud nine victory and get next on to skittle cakes and he needs to go for the full reset it's pop tarts that are holding this building for now and unfortunate that skittle cakes will go down he was going to be the big tool to try to find entry into that building gentrifying the slide out from hal and he trades one for one but the rest of tsm will clean up um, what seems to be cheese at G2 coming in for the third party. They're not giving them any breathing room and TSM are about to fall in just a moment. Designful gets two knocks and now it's just up to Imperial Hal here left in a 2v1. 
off angles together. The pressure is just immense. There's no time to heal. They're basically coming right for you. Design is coming around the corner. Akula is going to be able to answer that one with the first knock, but results is there and gentrifying, just lying it up. I mean, once you the door on all these squads, Thermite out, but his nade did get in and he has to give up that door for now, but he's doing the damage. Nox gas grenade has made its way on in or did it cancel? What happened there? As now Team Razor trying to hold them all out and they get the knock on to Doob. Do back away in time, but they lose out on one. Baby Tooley has fallen here as Hakulo has to run into the gap or into the zone. Team Razor, everything falling apart for them. Kills. Now she's going to go and try to make some sort of mountain play and get up on the ledge temporarily. But I'm really impressed with Finicky. I mean, it's tough to go take down there, tricky in a one on one. He took that corner, took that fight, but speaking of taking fights, Timmy immediately onto Phony. They're looking for some more. It's a two versus one situation. And <laughs> Finicky's gonna be able to pull this one off. The Fists of Fury, possibly. Finicky's probably gonna be in the vicinity as well. Gold armor for Timmy. Can he get the armor swap? He picks up a red as well. This is absolute madness for the 1v1. Oh, Timmy's cracked though. He's got 20 HP and Finicky! Clutches up for let's go ahead and take a look at the mobile one leaderboard to see who walked away with the victory. I don't think anyone's surprised. It is G2 with 79 points over. Now, finally, when all of the dust settled on Wednesday night, G2 Esports were the ones standing atop Series E Pro 9. 79 points for them gave them a 17 point lead over second place Team Razor and grabs them their fourth Pro Night victory of season three of Series E. G2 Esports sports continue to look like one of the best teams in the world and i'm certainly very excited to see how they can stack up when we get to the time for algs which is quickly approaching razor obviously can feel very good about their performance on wednesday as they are still trying to catch up to team pringles in our cumulative leaderboard meanwhile as i mentioned earlier tsm was looking to make it back-to-back -back pro night victories but certainly stumbled on wednesday only 24 points for the squad is very uncharacteristic when they average 35 kills alone on Pro Nights. This is the first time during Season 3 of Series E that TSM has finished outside of the top 5 and dropping all the way down to 17th is certainly a surprise for them. Meanwhile, many teams below the top 4 in Series E battling it out trying to get points. Team Cheez-It continues to be one of the most consistent performers on Wednesday night and Intel and Pringles are both tied with 36 points apiece as they continue to jostle for the top spot in Series E. Now let's check out our cumulative standings for the season for our partner squads. Team Intel continues to hold on first place and seem to be adopting, you know, a Team Pringles of Season 2-esque aura. They continue to just rack up points week after week after week. Even if they aren't finishing in first place consistently, they are not allowing teams to close the gap on them in any significant sense. Meanwhile, the biggest battle this season will likely be for fourth place. Team Pop-Tarts and Team Splash were jostling back and forth for that slot, and Pop-Tarts does end the night with claim over fourth place, but the battle through the last few weeks of the season will be very intense. And I want to look a little bit more in depth at these two squads and the way they've been performing this season. I was able to pull some stats for their season so far through eight weeks, and here is where they stack up. The point difference is just 16 between them on the standings, which means essentially nothing at this point. They are all but tied into the standings. You can see their average placements in games significantly better for Team Pop-Tarts. While 1.3 uh, placement points is not that significant in a small sample size, when you look over eight weeks of competition, that is very good for Team Pop-Tarts. They also lead the squad in kills with 250 total kills ahead of the 227 of Team Splash, but we'll have to see how things shake out over the rest of the season. Pop-Tarts also have those four top five finishes to build on. It's not a very high number, but still doubling up on what Team Splash has been able to do. However, the problem for Pop-Tarts is this seems to be a squad that is just getting largely carried by Lion. And it seems like if there is a night where Lion isn't able to carry the load, Pop-Tarts just will not succeed. Meanwhile, Splash, while not having the high-end talent that uh, Lion brings to a team Pop-Tarts, by committee, Splash has been consistently successful. They are my favorite 
to usurp Pop-Tarts for fourth place, but it still remains to be seen if they will be able to do it. Time is starting to run out this season, so we'll have to see who can grab that final guaranteed spot in the next season of Series E. Now let's look forward to next week of Series E. Next week will be week number nine, and it is Splash Week here at Series E. Obviously, just talked about that squad trying to usurp Team Pop-Tarts in the cumulative standings, and they will have a huge opportunity to try and show up during their sponsored week and do just that. When I'm looking at predictions for next week's competition, I'm actually going to go for it. I think Team Splash will take Tuesday night, and I'm also predicting that they will end next week in fourth place in our cumulative standing. So big predictions here, but I think Splash is ready to take the next step. When it looks towards Wednesday night, I'm actually going to pick Cloud9. They have one Pro Night victory under their belts for this season, and I think they are really starting to build on the changes that they've made in their roster. I was able to sit down with Zach Mazur, along with my co-host uh, Luke Shimona Hebrew, on our podcast Eat, Speak, Compete this last week, and we had a lot of discussion about where C9 sits at this state. They've been playing with Albert Laley here for a couple of months now, and they've recently made the shift away from Zach Mazur as their in-game leader over to Albert Laley. While those adjustments will take a little bit of time to take root and for the team to build off of these new adjustments, I think C9 is going to look very strong this year, and I think it's going to start with a win on Wednesday night. So I'm taking Splash on Tuesday and C9 on Wednesday, but I'm wondering just what you guys are thinking as well. Now it's time for my favorite segment of the show every week, and that is What's Up Apex Twitter. It's an opportunity for me to talk about the conversations that the community is having, or maybe take an opportunity to highlight members of the community that I feel deserve a certain spotlight. But what I want to talk about this week is hashtag a day off Twitch. This was a big discussion in the community over the last week, as tons of streamers got together and decided not to stream on Wednesday, September 1st, in solidarity with marginalized creators who are under attack from botting and hate raids. Now, I do want to mention, if you saw, we did, in fact, stream Series E on Wednesday. Now, that is because we do have contractual obligations to many different parties to have these broadcasts happen. I do understand if people are critical of us for doing that, but that is why we were streaming. I would specifically ask that for other creators, small or big streamers that did in fact decide to stream on Wednesday night, please do not send any hate their way. It does not mean that they do not support these causes. Now, I do wanna talk about the movement as a whole. I talked about how it is focused on bringing light and standing in solidarity with these marginalized creators. And as you can see in the graphic you're on your screen, the movement has some very specific goals. They want to push Twitch to do multiple different things. One, it starts with holding a roundtable discussion with affected creators to assist with the creation and implementation of more proactive and comprehensive tool sets to combat abuse on their streaming platform. Obviously, when you talk about the botting and hate raids, this has been a significant problem for a lot of different creators over the last little while. Lots of streamers are even getting banned for hate spam in their chats when they aren't even online because creators are considered responsible for their chats even when they aren't streaming. They also are asking for uh, creating proactive protection to be implemented immediately, enabling creators to do things like selecting account age of prospective chatters and allow or deny incoming raids. They want to remove the ability to attach more than three Twitch accounts to one email address. As things currently stand, hate raiders can use one email account to register unlimited addresses, and this obviously creates a lot of problems. And then finally, they want to provide transparency into the actions being taken to protect creators, which is of course important. They want the time frame for implementing all of these tools and the involvement of the Twitch Safety Advisory Council. I think all of these requests are very reasonable and very good moves for the community. Twitch has been and always should be a very safe and inclusive place for creators and viewers alike. And we definitely support this movement. So we hope that Twitch can continue to listen to these creators and these communities and make the necessary changes. So we definitely do support hashtag a day off Twitch. And we thank all of the creators that did make the move to take a day 
off of streaming to highlight these issues. All right, next up, let's talk about competitive Apex news. All 20 invites for the coming ALGS Pro League were announced just the other day. Interestingly enough, uh, Apex actually, in fact, leaking a couple of roster moves. Uh, the entire, entire CLG roster was leaked before it was announced through uh, this announcement as well as uh, Vaxxon being added as the new third four Renegades. So the new CLG roster, obviously very excited about this. GS Bird, a former player here in Series E, formerly of Team Rice Krispie Treats and Era Eternity, is now joined by Nanofries and Vatra. So that is the brand new CLG roster. No holdovers from the old roster. And then obviously Vaxlon, formerly competing with CLG, will join Renegades along with Pow Pow and Saucerer. So couple of very interesting rosters there. Also, to note, Clarify has joined Klain and Kenny on Xset. Obviously, Rambo has now been competing with uh, Madness and Noct on the Benchwarmer squad, so his spot has been filled over at Xset. But one thing to note is there are some notable squads that were left out of the invites for the Pro League. For example, Noble, our good friends, the former Pop-Tarts roster were left out, 303 Esports North America, and the bench warmers squad. Now, that one is to an extent understandable. The lack of having an org signing that roster would mean that they are unlikely to get invited to the Pro League, but they obviously will have the opportunity to qualify through the preseason qualifiers. And I would say, at the very least, Noble and Benchwarmer should be heavy favorites to qualify through these preseason qualifiers, which start in just about a week. They kick off Saturday, September 11th. So we're super excited about that. Tons of teams will be coming together to compete for the next 20 slots in the Pro League. And of course, to be clear, the 20 invited teams for every region's Pro League were announced, and then there are another 20 spots available for each of the five regions through the preseason qualifiers that kick off next weekend. It's going to be very exciting. This next year of ALGS promises to be bigger and better than ever, and we cannot wait for it to get started. Now let's just talk about some general Apex Legends news, and I want to start with some more news on Twitch. We found out that Apex Legends was the third most watched game on Twitch in August, nearly doubling their hours watched in that month. You can see on your screen, they were up 98.8%, eclipsing the 90 million hours watched mark. So incredible. They only sat behind League of Legends and Grand Theft Auto V in terms of game titles, and then obviously Just Chatting, which continues to dominate Twitch at the top. But incredible that I've talked about it a handful of times throughout this season. Apex Legends has by no means hit its peak. It is continuing to be on the rise as more and more creators come into the game as the competitive scene continues to evolve. So it's fantastic to see Apex Legends continuing to succeed and the future looks extremely bright for the title. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in general Apex news was some development and some design changes we are going to see here very soon. It appears that tap strafing will be essentially gone from the game, but I do want to touch on a couple of things. Uh, John Larson, who is an associate live balance designer at Respawn, is very consistently vocal about different changes that happen in the game. He gave a lot of good insight and discussion around the changes that we saw to Seer a couple of weeks ago, and after the tap strafing announcement, did release a twit longer that I want to read a couple of quotes from. I highly encourage that anybody who is in interested in seeing some more in-depth thought from the developers about these changes to tap strafing, go check out uh, John Larson on Twitter. He is at respawn underscore J Biebs. Uh, should be RSPN underscore J Biebs, but check out this tweet longer. I think it is very uh, insightful into the designer's decisions behind this, but I want to read a couple of quotes from him. Uh, the first one, he says, the goal is to remove some of the sharpness in momentum conservation around 90 degree plus angles. That's what I'm thinking of when I use the term tap strafe throughout this post. Things like wall bounce redirect back onto the same wall should feel unchanged, but movement afforded by scroll wheel strafing will be removed. So obviously when this announcement came out that tap strafing would be removed, there was a ton of outcry from the community. While not all players are able to use tap strafing when they play 
play Apex Legends. It is extremely popular for mouse and keyboard players at the top levels of play. Now, a lot of players were frustrated that this seemingly lowered the skill ceiling, but it seems very much from this twit longer that the goal is not to remove all things considered tap strafing. They are looking to target some very specific, very extreme examples of using tap strafing and try to clean things up because of the lack of counterplay to some of these abilities. The other quote I wanna highlight is uh, John saying, I feel it's important to note that limitations don't always equate to lowering skill gaps. There are skill gaps in working within constraints. One could argue that B-hop healing lowered the skill ceiling. Players could make up for misplays with less constraints on their ability to safely heal. Different types of skill expression are changed when we touch something like perfect, perfect air control for better or worse. So I think this was just some very good insight. I love being able to see different designers at Respawn giving us more insight into the thought processes behind these changes. Obviously, John was saying that they talked to many different high-level players about these changes, so this is not just Respawn completely ignoring the community and taking things out. So I would say, while we did see a lot of outcry from the community, it should be given an opportunity to see how these changes affect it, and I hope that Respawn is ready and willing to maybe roll back some changes if these don't hit their mark, but we'll just have to see. But definitely another thank you to John Larson for being open and honest about the development process over there at Respawn. Now for our last segment of the day, I was able to sit down with Verholst, one of our players for Team Intel on Tuesday night, halfway through their open night competition. I was able to get some insight on their thought process through this season, as well as talk to him about their performance at the GLL Arena's 10K tournament last weekend. Let's check out what he had to say on Tuesday night. I am now going to be joined by one of those players who came and played Deal or Steal with me to start the show, and he's now joining me here for an interview. I've got Verholst joining me on the show once again. Welcome back, my man. It's been a long time, um, but let's just get into this real fast. Uh, three games down so far today. You guys have had a couple of top placings, but haven't been able to break through uh, for that win just yet. What are your thoughts on how you guys have played so far? Um, I feel like we've been playing pretty well. Um, we've, we've only had like one... I'd say like one or two major mistakes so far. Uh, we're we're getting we two out of three games we placed really well and we got top five. Um, one game we kind of choked a three v three fight. Uh, one of us went down and a third party came and cleaned us up, which was unfortunate. But we know we know exactly what mistake we made, so we're not too worried about it because we know next time it's not going to happen. Um, I feel like we're playing pretty good today. We're learning more about rotations, and that's the goal. Now, coming into the season, uh, you guys were the squad that I actually predicted to win uh, this season. You were our best team in qualifiers coming into season three. Do you feel like the success you've had so far now through seven weeks of play was expected? Do you feel like you maybe exceeded your own expectations with how consistent you guys have been? Um, personally, I didn't really know if we were going to be a top team right away just because we haven't competed against like I've never really competed against some of the some of these good pro teams mm -hmm. up until East, uh, esports arena and um, after like two weeks after those first like two or three weeks I knew right away we were capable of dominating being on the top of the leaderboard the entire season and we just had a couple of great performances and that's like set the confidence for us throughout the entire season and now we think we're definitely capable of placing super high in, high, high in ALGS as well, as well as finishing out this eSports Arena season on top. Would love to see that. You guys had a uh, fantastic top placing uh, this past weekend. You competed in the GLL Summer Arenas Tournament, and you guys won the 10K uh, just a couple of days ago. What was that entire experience like, and how much do you feel like you're able to take away from that different format and apply it here to Battle Royale? Oh man, that was an insane experience. That was so much fun playing in that tournament, being in the same tournament once again with like G2, Sentinels, Alpine. It just feels feel like I'm blessed to even be playing with those same guys. Um, it was super fun. It was definitely, we kind of pride ourselves on being a great mechanical team and Arena is where we really proved that. We proved that our teamwork and our mechanics are some of the best compared to every other team. Um, 
there's a lot a lot we learned from that a lot we learned around team fighting and 3v3 fighting i feel like uh we learned just how to coordinate team shots how to coordinate pushes i feel like we got a lot better at pushing as a team pushing on isolated players whatever opportunities arise um it's great just like practice really good practice um yeah Hey, awesome. That's, you know, some good scratch in your guys' pocket. That's a $4,000 prize for first place. So that's uh, fantastic. Congratulations to y'all. We absolutely love to see it. And you still got three more uh, games tonight. Expect, uh, I'd imagine expectations are high for these last three. Oh, yeah. We're hoping we win at least one of these three. Okay. Hey, we will, uh, we will keep an eye on you guys. Love watching you so far this season. Love to see the success uh, and keep bringing it to the table here on Intel Week. Thanks so much for joining me again, my man, and best of luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. All right. That was Verholst of Team Intel. They currently sit in first place atop the series E cumulative standings, and they're trying to chase down a bench warmer squad tonight that had a very strong start to the day. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll kick off the second half of open night here on Series E. We'll be back in a few. Again, a huge thank you there to Verholz for joining me during the show on Tuesday night. Always appreciate getting to talk to our different players and get some insight on how they are performing and what they are thinking about what's going on in the league. So definitely appreciate his time and best of luck to he and Team Intel throughout the rest of the season. For us, though, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Final Circle. I hope you folks enjoyed the show. If you want to get in on the conversation, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at any time. I am at Castor Yeso and would love to continue the discussion with you throughout the weeks. Make sure to tune into Series E next week. Of course, it is Splash Week and we kick all of the action off with Open Night on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And I'll be back here for Final Circle once again next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the weekend. Continue that grind on the Apex ladder and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.